guys, what's growing? It's Heather at Bush Poppy Farm. It is Friday, the last day of sun for almost a week. <laughs> so I'm taking advantage of that and trying to get a few things done quickly out here at the farm. Um, I brought out all the stuff from the greenhouse that I wanted to clear out. Uh, I will have to keep coming out here daily to water because things get a lot hotter in this greenhouse uh, because it's all glass, uh, even with the shade cloth. And uh, I want to make sure they don't dry out. So I brought those out here. I brought the box of lilies out here, which is what the camera's sitting on right now. Um, because next week, even while it's pouring rain, I can be in here planting lilies in crates and the 4x4 bed, which is over here. So that's the 4x4 bed. Uh, it just needs some compost, which I still have out in the in the yard. And uh, then I'll put the lilies in. Get the lilies planted next week. Um, keep watering these. These sweet peas are getting huge. They've already been pinched and, and they're already much bigger. They're going to go on the fence line right over there. And uh, so when we get a break in the rain next week, I will go on and plant them because they're big at this point. I have a sunflower succession out here, some other stuff that needs to go maybe in the high tunnel. We'll just have to see how much space I have. Um, also brought out a big box of drip tape. Uh, problem with the water here is we're on a well, which is great. Uh, sometimes, uh, but it's very, very hard water, very hard. So there's so much um, calcium buildup in the drip tape that the emitters get clogged like after one season. So I just have a giant roll of it now and I'll have to keep replacing it, which really stinks because it's plastic and I don't want to do that, use that much plastic, but this is really the only way I can water here at the farm effectively and efficiently. So. Uh, so let's take a quick run around these beds so I can make a mental note of what I need to do and what's coming up so I know what I can start harvesting soon. Then I need to go harvest in the high tunnel because I have a bouquet bar that I'm doing tomorrow and so I've already harvested tulips and narcissus and greenery at home and I'm just going to see if we have any ranunculus that I can take here today. And then uh, the last thing I need to do before I leave here today to go do something really fun is check on the bees. I need to see if they're still alive, if there's anything left of the hive. And if there is, I have a pollen patty that I'm gonna put on top of the, um, on top of the frames. I actually have a box right here. So this is a medium deep box. This is a medium box that I have, uh, the hives over there have a deep box on the bottom which is much taller, and then uh, a medium box on top. So if the bees are still alive in there, <laughs> this one actually has some drawn comb in it, which is awesome. So here, let me show you. So you can put these frames completely empty into a, uh, into a box, uh, or you can put what's called foundation. This is a plastic uh, honeycomb shaped foundation uh, that goes in here and then you rub it with some beeswax to kind of entice the bees to start building comb. Um, and then what they'll do is they will build out Oh, it's so good to see some built out comb in here. So then what they'll do is they'll come in and these are put together. So this is called burr comb. It's stuck to the bottom and you'll want it. You want to scrape this off. Actually, this is just beeswax I can keep. Um, bring that home with me. Uh, and the older the wax is, the uh, darker it is in color. Anyway, they will start to build comb. You see this raised area here? So that is, that is built by the bees and they'll build that to start laying for the queen to start laying brood and she'll lay one egg inside each of these cells. Um, this size cell is for worker bees. The ones for the drones are bigger. Usually when you look for, uh, you know, how the bees are doing, you want to see a lot of brood cells like this full um, and then a few, uh, some drones, but not too many drones. One of the reasons is drones, um, the, the Varroa mite that likes to kill bees, um, it likes, it chooses drone cells over worker cells 10 to one uh, to populate. So if you can get rid of some of the drone cells, then you're getting rid of mites. Um, but the great thing about having comb that's already drawn is it attracts the bees 
uh, to start using it and it uses less resources for them because it's already built. So if they have to draw a comb on all of these foundations, it uses up a lot of their energy, a lot of their resources into just making wax to build comb. Um, and then they can't put that into all the other duties that they have. I really want to check on the bees, see if they're still alive. Um, if not, then I'm going to get a new, what's called a nuke um, in early to mid April um, and start over. And I'll be sad. And I know that it's probably my fault uh, if they're dead. It's definitely my fault if they're um, lower population than they should be at this point. So. Uh, I know that it's fairly common for new beekeepers, but I still am not happy about that. Okay, so uh, I am going to really quick go harvest. Let's go look and see what's going on uh, in the beds around us because a lot of stuff is starting to bloom. So here we have the new bed that I put together in October. Um, all the daffodils have come up and they're starting to bloom. I see uh, California poppy and status and a bunch of other wildflowers in here. The grasses, those are invasive. I'm gonna pull those up, those are weeds. Um, and then this fence line, which I'm gonna ha also have to clean up is where I'm going to put all of the sweet peas. So that's to start with. Over here, we can see all the weeding that I need to do. I need to trim up this edge of this bed here. It definitely is a mess, uh, but the daffodils are so pretty. It's so nice to see them up. Uh, these um, need to come up. I'll just trim back that salvia. Actually, that's a Russian sage. Um, and then, um, yeah, trim up all this stuff. I'm hoping to do this next week in a break in the rain. But I, what cracks me up is the calendula, right? So we've been getting <laughs> below zero. It snowed out here the other day and still look at them. They're just crazy. Um, so lots of daffodils. They do really look pretty. Those will be here permanently and they will just multiply over time. This is a bunch of ranunculus that Griffin dropped off. They look pretty good. They're a little light in color, but I'm hoping being out in the sun will help them darken up a little bit. Um, Still, this bed needs to be all cleaned out. I see lots of weeds that need to come up, but the daffodils are coming up and that's great. Look at that giant hemlock. So that's a poison hemlock. That needs to come up. Um, yeah, borage looking wonderful. I don't see any bees on it either though. So that's kind of an indication right there. Uh, this is a, nope. I thought at first it was a sweet Annie. Oh, you know what? That might be actually be Scotch broom, which is not what we want. So I'm gonna have to pull that guy up too. Lots of cleanup to do in here, but the, but the daffodils, that makes me happy. That means they took. And then this calendula, look at that. So all this bed back here, still need to do all the cleaning up. I'm gonna be really ruthless and just pull a whole bunch of stuff up because it's pretty easy to replace. Uh, I need to clean up some weeds in here. And then of course, all that calendula is still coming up too. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, also not seeing any bees over here where they usually hang out. So another indication. So this bed's kind of a mess, it needs to be weeded, but it looks like some of the, these are Jacob Klein. Um, I don't remember, but this is the ones that the deer ate down, I think this means they're coming back. So that's actually really good. Daffodils, daffodils. These are the early ones, obviously, the ones in the center here. And then the ones in these pots, Aiden planted those and they're up. So let's go check out really quick in the high tunnel. Okay, ranunculus. So I'm seeing some stems, but they do not look ready to harvest yet. <clears throat> This one, definitely not ready to harvest. What you want with ranunculus is you want to be seeing the color. You want them to be what's called marshmallow stage. So when you squeeze it, it feels like a marshmallow. Um, that's where they need to be. That is not ready, but it's got multiple stems on it and I'm seeing lots of other um, stems coming up too. So that is great. Yeah, you are going to have blooms in here within a week or so. Here's another one. This is a, oh, see, now that one is a lot softer, but still not really ready. I would say another couple days. But I am seeing blooms. 
uh, buds on uh, almost everything. Tulips, these guys still coming up. Um, this one, what is this, the next, this is ice crystals, I think. Snow crystals, sorry. Uh, this, look how short. So I have a bunch of these at home too. They're in the bed where I just planted lettuce and I harvested a bunch of those today, um, but they were also short. However, they're great for the workshop that I'm teaching tomorrow. I mean the bouquet bar because everybody's making vase arrangements so they don't need to have super long stems. So I'll probably take a few of these. Let's see. I mean, this is so short. Oh, come on. Wow, this one's really very deep. Maybe they're not that short. No, that's still really, really short. However, I'll still take them because they're gonna bloom soon anyway. And uh, if I don't take them, then they'll just bloom out here in the field. So I'll bring them with me. Oh boy, those are... <laughs> yeah, these got, these got planted really deep. That one's a little bit taller. So I'm gonna go on and harvest the... Cause see, the reason I'm harvesting them is they're all really close to starting to bloom. So there's no point in leaving them in the ground anymore because they are not going to get much taller. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go on and take those. And then let's see over here. Uh, I do see some slightly further along ranunculus. Oh, got to come in here and weed. So this is what I'm going to do during the, during the rain next week because I can work in here in the, in the rain. It's not a big deal. Oh, look! That is a beautiful sight. Hello, ladybird. I hope that that ladybird's arrival does not mean that we have aphids. Um, see this guy? That's pretty much perfect to harvest. It's soft like a marshmallow. You can see the petals, the individual petals, and you can also see the center there. Um, however, um, that's the only one, so I don't think I'm gonna harvest that one. Um, but just looking good. I'm seeing lots of buds. So next week I'll be in here. I will weed. I'm gonna come over here with some heavy duty tools. I tried to dig up all of those horrible thistles last year before the rains and the ground was so hard. Now the ground's soft. So they're all gonna get dug up before they go to seed and start spreading more of their yuckiness. Um, in this bed, I have some space. So uh, some of the seedlings that are in the high tunnel, I mean, in the greenhouse right now will come out here. I can do all of this next week, even if it's dumping rain. This is feverfew, um, still not growing that much. This is starflower, uh, docus, no, omimagus, I think. Actually, I can't tell. Uh, this is star, uh, strawflower and then weeding lots of weeding the rest of this is all going to be dianthus and actually the dianthus is looking amazing right now in the home um, greenhouse so it will be coming out soon to go in the ground and this is going to be its stretch here but you can see all the weeding i have to do so yeah i'm just going to spend time out here in the rain and enjoy the sound and um, i'll be covered and um, be waiting for all these beautiful ranunculus so I can start harvesting them all. Okay, so I'm gonna pull these tulips real quick. There's some weirdness going on on the property right now. Somebody's driving up with a boat, a boat. Okay, I'm gonna roll up the sides too because it is 85 degrees in here right now. It's pretty hot. I'm gonna roll up the sides and then get going, finishing uh, pulling up these tulips. Oh, here's that hairy bittercress again. This guy, oh, hate it. It's not poisonous. In fact, I think it's edible, but this is the one that shoots its seeds like four feet. Um, it's kind of crazy. So yeah, definitely need to weed out here. Well, unfortunately, all the bees are dead. Uh, looks like a bunch of them actually drowned in the um, nectar um, sugar water solution that I left for them to give them food um, over the winter. So. And I actually have read that that is a problem with that particular type of feeder, but that's all I had. So yeah, that sucks. It really sucks. So I'm gonna have a lot of cleaning up to do. I have to take those boxes apart and um, you know, clean them all out 
keep as much of the comb as possible, but um, I probably need, these particular boxes are not painted. Usually bee boxes are painted. These are actually dipped in beeswax. So um, I think they're gonna need to be re-dipped because uh, they definitely are weather beaten. Um, but that will have to wait. So uh, right now I'm gonna take my dirty hands and we are going to go pick up the chicks. So what I've done is I actually have decided to set the brooder up in the greenhouse at home because my garage is really cold. Uh, ambient air temperature in that garage is, hovers around 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, and that's, even with a heat lamp, that's just asking for trouble. That's asking for dead chicks. The uh, ambient air temperature in the greenhouse is around 60 degrees um, or higher during the day. So that, uh, is a much better temperature for them. It makes it for tight, uh, quite a tight squeeze in there, but you know, it's just for six to eight weeks. It'll be fine. I can walk around it, which is good. I was afraid it was gonna block the entire walkway, uh, but I do have space to walk around it. So that's where they're gonna be. I have started to set it up. I need to get bedding. Right now, um, there's a supply chain issue for bedding for chicks, um, which apparently cannot be cedar and even pine shavings can cause too much dust and cause them in the first two weeks, uh, can cause um, lung problems. So I, since I'm brand new at this and I don't wanna lose any, but I expect I might, uh, I wanna make sure I can do everything I can. So for right now I'm using shredded newspaper um, and I need to go find some newspaper. I had actually, it's so funny yesterday, um, I actually got two of our local uh, town newspapers delivered, um, which are little thin things. They're not like, you know, <laughs> a regular newspaper, uh, but it was something. So at least I could line the bottom and get some shreds going, but I need to get more shredded stuff in there. I guess uh, with chicks, if they don't have something um, textured to walk around on and it's a slippery surface instead, they can get uh, correct me for you chicken keepers uh, if I say this wrong it's either splay foot or splay leg where literally they'll become deformed um, so you want to have something more solid for them to grip onto whether that's like you know uh, pine shavings or whatever but just a, just a bottom surface of just flat newspaper is not a good idea because it's too slick and their legs will slide out from under them so um, yeah let's go pick them up and then we can take them home and get them installed in their new home. Uh, and then I'm gonna be keeping a close eye on them over the next two weeks. Supposedly the first two weeks is when they're most vulnerable and uh, anything can happen. So I'm really gonna be watching them like a hawk. Uh, even though it will be raining a lot, um, I can get out to that um, greenhouse really easily and it's dry in there and uh, much warmer than in the garage. Also a lot more natural light so they'll have a heat lamp to keep them warm. I do have a um, heat plate on order but there's back orders of those so I had to start with something so heat lamp for that. All right let's go to Biofuel Oasis and get our chickies. So these gals were hatched yesterday uh, and they seem to be doing great. 
four of them of the six had pasty butt, so I just took care of that. Um, they're still a little bit damp on the butt. I couldn't, my hair dryer doesn't have um, a super low, low, low setting, so I had to hold them really far away from it, and um, they were really restless, didn't, didn't like that. So I toweled them off, used the blow dryer as much as possible. Um, hopefully it'll, <laughs> they'll stay warm. But some of them are venturing over into the unheated part of the brooder, so I think they're gonna be fine. It's nice and comfy in here right now. Uh, 20 degrees Celsius. Um, so, I mean, the ambient air temperature is nice and they are hanging out under the, oh geez, something's eating my hair. Um, they're hanging out under the heat lamp as well. Oh, and eating too, so that's good. Um, but they're just so darn cute. So all in all, a pretty productive day. It's a bummer that the bees are gone, but I did get, um, while I was at Biofuel Oasis, I did get three, two deep and one medium, already painted boxes, uh, not the frames, because I have plenty of those. And the reason is that the ones out at the farm, like I said, are, are dipped in beeswax, which is wonderful, but, um, they need to be redone. Either everything scraped off and painted, sanded and painted, or uh, everything scraped off and redipped in beeswax. And so this way I can get started on the season with the new nuke with uh, new box box frames, um, and then I can work on the other ones, getting them ready to go. Because in the first month or so, uh, first six weeks or so of a new uh, nuke with a new hive, they can expand into multiple boxes because the queen is busy doing tons and tons and tons of laying. It's like every two weeks they can fill a whole box. So with new bees. So uh, I want to make sure I have plenty of boxes uh, to keep them happy and healthy so they don't swarm. Um, by adding new boxes, you can kind of prevent that because it gives them more space. One of the reasons bees swarm is that they run out of space for their queen to lay. And so then the decision is made, the queen's gonna take half the hive and go somewhere else. And so what they do is they start, you can tell when they're gonna swarm because they start creating what's called um, queen um, cells. Basically, they're big long cells that usually hang off the bottom end of each of the frames. Um, and they uh, create queens in those. So they take, um, basically whatever queen hatches out first and is going to be the strongest one she will then go around and kill all the other queen cells uh, to make sure she has no um, no uh, competition then she'll go on her maiden flight is the only time a queen ever leaves the hive one flight to go mate and that's it for the rest of her life and she will then stay in that hive unless they split, swarm off and split. She'll stay in that hive for the rest of her life laying eggs. Quite a life, huh? <laughs> so all that being said, I want to make sure that I have plenty of space for the new hive um, and I'm going to be much more diligent. Um, I was kind of hands off because I'd been doing a lot of reading about natural beekeeping and trying to um, not disturb them too much, but I'm a total newbie. I need to learn more about them before I completely back off and let them have their reign. They were fine during the year. It was just, they ran out of forage and then the population got lower and lower. And I think based on what I saw in the hive, I think there just weren't enough bees to keep them warm. And when we, we've had so many cold temperatures, um, it didn't seem wet in there. So that's a good thing. So I think it was temperature and there just weren't enough bees to keep them all warm. So they definitely couldn't grow any brood, um, but they didn't even eat the sugar um, that I left for them. So that means they were probably on their way out when I put that on there before the holidays. Well, you live and learn. Um, so like chicks do, they get up, eat, drink, and then pass out and go to sleep. <laughs> and look half dead, but then they get up and run around. So these guys are doing great. We'll check on them every day. Actually, I'm gonna check on them a couple times a day. I want them to get really used to being handled um, by all of us so that if I ever have a problem down the road when they need medical attention or whatever, that it's gonna be easy because they're used to being handled. So, all right, that's gonna be it for me today. Thanks so much for joining me, you guys. Um, we'll see you in the next video, bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.